Migrants looking for fast cash to get a job can wind up as pawns in a criminal operation. Many of them caught stealing in order to pay for fake IDs to gain employment. The crooks were selling. Huh, so criminals are now selling fake IDs to asylum seekers. That might be a problem. Nearly 500 fake IDs were uncovered. Social security cards, driver's licenses, and American permanent residency cards. So in recent months, a wave of migrant crime has washed over our city. Now, border officials also warning that a criminal group in Guinea has allegedly stolen some of those blank passports as well and is now selling those with falsified information. The small number of people are breaking the law and having a huge impact on our public safety. But as the city grapples with the migrant crisis, desperation is kicking in for those who still can't work legally. We know a lot of the migrants that are crossing, they have the intention of coming here and starting a better life, but we are learning that there are some migrants who have no intention of following the laws and are actually using those false documents. So apparently, you don't have to go to the DMV anymore if you want to get an ID. Because they're now being sold on the street. But the thing nobody is talking about is that although the United States has allowed millions of people to come here and seek asylum, there's really no plan in place for those folks to do anything except sit around and wait for paperwork to clear, which takes months. They can't work. And this has led to the creation of a massive underground economy, which is completely run and monopolized by criminals. Recently, right here in New York, we've had gangs on mopeds stealing purses and cell phones. We've also had police officers attacked in broad daylight. And this doesn't just victimize average New Yorkers who want to go about their lives. It's also victimizing the asylum seekers getting swept into this underworld. But it's not just gangs and criminals benefiting from this broken system. And it's recently come out that Tyson Foods, a large American food producer, has a third of its work workforce, 42,000 people, they've recently immigrated to the country seeking asylum. Now proponents are going to say this is good, people are working, they're being productive, they're not joining gangs, but on the other hand, critics are going to bring up the fact that people who've come here with nothing and may have a language barrier could be abused by these big companies. And it's legal. But if that sounds bad, it's got nothing on what happens to people who buy a fake ID on the street. So fake IDs, big business right now because they allow you to live in a city like New York and you're gonna need an ID to do things like get a job, move up the economic ladder, start providing for yourself. But the problem many asylum seekers have is when they come here, they don't have any ability to document their identity and there could be legitimate reasons for that or frighteningly illegitimate reasons. They have come across piles and piles of discarded documents on the U.S. side. This is happening before they're even apprehended by Border Patrol agents. Now the idea here is that they're gonna come in without any form of identification and they will be processed with whatever information is provided. Huh, so some people might enter the country without an ID and other people may have had one up until the point where they entered the country and then they discarded it for some reason. And they may have needed it to get on a bus or board a train or get on an airplane to come pretty close to the border before they cross over, but then they got rid of it. Now many people coming to America, they've spent a lot of money doing so and it's taken quite a bit of time they don't want to have a problem if they get stopped. They could potentially get deported or denied entry if Customs and Border Patrol has an issue with the paperwork they have, which is why some people might be discarding it. But apparently there's a loophole in the system which makes it easier for people to enter the country if they are a minor. And this has critics of current immigration policy speculating that the generosity of systems like this are being abused by a small minority of people who essentially want to start over with a completely clean slate and a new identity. Either way, the problem problem for many people, whether they come in with an ID or not, is that once they get here, there's a whole bunch of things that they can't do, but that they're going to be expected to do if they want to survive. And this has created a massive opportunity for criminals to exploit people who are desperate. And nobody's talking about how big of a problem this actually is. Because not only do you have gang members selling people fake IDs that could be stolen, you've got fake immigration lawyers, you've got fake government officials. There is an entire industry just set up to scam people. And they're also scamming America. Migrants looking for fast cash to get a job can wind up as pawns in a criminal operation. Many of them caught stealing in order to pay for fake IDs to gain employment. They were then being able to either buy or trade for 
social security numbers uh, cards or American permanent residency cards. So this particular newscast, this is from Chicago. Apparently they've got the same problem over there that we have here. And apparently you've got people stealing and shoplifting in order to get merchandise or stolen property worth enough money to help them buy a fraudulent identity document. Think of the problems that's causing in society. Many major cities already have huge crime problems and now there's an incentive for more crime. For example, here in New York, shoplifting is already through the roof and now there might be more of it because people need to steal in order to obtain what they need to get a job from a company that doesn't want to break the law. On top of that, shoplifting in New York is only a misdemeanor if a person ends up stealing less than a thousand dollars of stuff. And if you think about it, a place like New York is perfect for these criminals and these gangs to operate with their fake identity businesses because you've got a lot of people here, they're seeking asylum, you've got very, very lax laws as far as theft and stuff is concerned. This is a great place for a criminal. Because with almost 180,000 thousand people having come to New York to seek asylum. That's a lot of potential customers they can exploit. But the fake ID business is actually bigger than gang members in back alleys. In fact, some people are even going so far as to manipulate their identity documents with the help of their own government. from Guinea may have been coached by officials within their own government to change their age on their passport so that they can enter as an unaccompanied minor. Border officials also warning that a criminal group in Guinea has allegedly stolen some of those blank passports as well and is now selling those with falsified information. So this is the Guinea embassy right here, this little building. And there are allegations this government is helping its citizens get into the country for reasons that really aren't that clear. A news report says they're telling their citizens who look young enough to attempt to enter as minors because the process is simpler. But a gang was able to get a whole bunch of blank passports from this country. And now they're printing identities for people that look real but don't exist in any official capacity whatsoever. And as you'll soon see, this is actually less sophisticated than what some of the local gangs are doing here in New York. But why would a government be in the business of helping its own citizens leave and live somewhere else? And the other question this brings up is, is Guinea the only country doing this or are there other countries helping their citizens come here. The simplest explanation would suggest it would help the country's economy for people to leave, work in America, and then send money back home. Those are called remittances, and they can be particularly important for a country with a lesser economy to help its citizens provide for themselves. But it's not just a country like Guinea that could be helping people get an ID or people throwing away their ID and then buying a fake ID on the streets of New York. The U.S. government is also accidentally making this whole problem worse. And that's not something any anyone's talking about because it happens at the border. Think about this. If someone comes to the U.S. and they discard their identification or if they don't have any, what then happens is they get processed at the border with information that they supply to the processors. The problem, though, is that we are basically taking people's word for it, that they say who they are who they are, they're from whatever country they're from, when they say they don't, they, uh, they don't have any criminal history, they've never been arrested or something, like, we're just be like, hopefully they're telling the truth. Right, so we have to take people's word for it. Now, this isn't an insinuation that that everybody coming in has intentions that are bad, but there are some people, a small minority, but there's not much Border Patrol can do. I mean, this is the only information that they're getting, which means they have to use it when they get it and then update it in the future if they find out that it changes or wasn't legitimate when they got it. But unfortunately, there have been big crimes committed here in America from people who abused this. So in the case of Jose Antonio Ibarra here, uh, he, of course, the Georgia murder suspect. Now, it turns out, though, that the ID number that he gave is not actually valid. It actually has an extra number. So we're working our sources in Venezuela. So this case made national headlines when someone attacked a woman in Georgia. In this particular someone, they were operating under a false identity. The information they gave to Customs and Border Patrol was bogus. And although they claimed to be from Venezuela, when the information they provided was checked, the Venezuelan government was like, hey, we don't have this person in our system. But the ID number that they have, if you remove one digit, it actually pops up as a woman. And it looks like their past included ties to a violent gang. But that brings up a very interesting consideration. The information they gave to Customs and Border Patrol was fake. And eventually they were found out. So how is it that the scammers here in New York are getting around this issue? And how is it that the IDs they're making for people may be better than completely fake information? The answer to this is terrifying. <laughs> So
So the reason that having an ID that looks official is so important, <laughs> even though it's fake, is because if a business thinks it's legit, they're not gonna question you about where you got it. Because having a fake ID is a crime. In New York, it's a felony. Punishable by up to seven years in prison. But as many people know, New York's not exactly tough on crime, and critics say that the city's soft on crime attitude is tempting people to go and do something illegal, whereas they otherwise might not have. Because the reward is that you can live a normal life with a social security number, now you can open yourself a bank account. And the socials on these fake IDs people are buying might belong to you or to me. Anyone ever gotten a letter from their bank saying their social security number was stolen? I've gotten one of those and now we're learning about another awful thing that happens once that happens. And it's not just socials. People are buying driver's licenses. They're buying green cards, which means you can have fake citizenship for under $300. Green cards are a super big deal because they mean you're a lawful permanent resident. And then you can rent an apartment. You can get a job. And you could be driving around in a car that you're not qualified to drive. And to a lot of people, the process for legally getting those things just takes so long that they'll starve before it ever happens. But the problem is, not all asylum seekers are eligible for work authorization. And the idea of waiting months to find out that you can't have a job is just not worth it for some folks. From the moment someone arrives, the clock starts ticking. They've got to find employment. They've got to start their new life. Otherwise, they might not make it, but that's leading to people getting exploited by these gangs. And just to arrive at a place like Grand Central in New York City, you're gonna get exploited along every step of the process. The cartels, the bus companies, everyone that helps you is getting their cut. And then it happens again when you try to get a job and provide for yourself. Because even though getting a fake ID is illegal, without a job at a real company, you could get swept up into the criminal underworld. Speaking of which, if somebody comes here for the express purpose of committing crime, having a fake fraudulent identity would definitely be helpful. Because if the police stop you and ask for your ID, you'll have something to show them that doesn't raise any red flags. And because it's using stolen information, if they scan it with one of their scanners, things will look like they check out. And what nobody's talking about is America has essentially created one of the largest fraudulent identity marketplaces in the entire world, which has terrible implications for law-abiding Americans and asylum seekers. So the statistics from last year's southern border immigration, around 2.5 million people, and that has created a massive opportunity for the worst elements of American society. But the problem for the scammers is that they can't just resell one identity to everybody. And what that means is you now have massive demand for other people's social security numbers and ID. And what this means is cybercrime is only gonna go through the roof. And these gang members who are selling IDs on the streets here in the city, they got those identities that they're now reselling from other people who had to steal them already. And what that likely means is that financial crimes, people losing everything they have when their bank account gets drained, stuff like that, it's gonna start happening more often. And that identity theft pipeline that starts when you open the wrong email attachment, going completely broke, having your bank account completely finished off, that's just the first step. The final step in that process is now somebody is masquerading as you in another city, in another part of the country. And think about who's benefiting from a system like this, the asylum seekers, they're not benefiting from it because they're the ones being exploited, but the businesses that hire these people, now they've got a new employee and the gang members have plenty of customers. And of course, the crooks who just drained your life savings benefited. And apparently police were able to identify these gang members by their telltale call sign. They stand on the street corner and just whisper, social, 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 the same way that drugs are sold in this city. On their phones, they show you images of what your new fake identity will look like. They take your picture, they get your information. And since all the stuff that they need to reprint an ID can be bought probably on Amazon, it's not that hard for people that have a computer to do. And of course, these are MS-13 gang members as well. We're not exactly talking about the Boy Scouts. According to the New York Post, social security cards are 80 bucks, and a green card with your picture on it somewhere between 100 and 200, depending on who you talk to. And if you want proof that criminals are benefiting from hiding their age, this guy says that he's 17 years old. Prosecutors allege that he is older than that, but he's part of the group that attacked the police in Times Square a month ago. And 
as a minor, he won't face the same sentencing that he would as an adult, which means it's not only easier to get into the country if you're a minor, once you're here, if you do something wrong, it's easier to get away with it. Making identity theft something more and more criminals will become involved with once they find out how useful it is. And think of how complicated this makes things for police. They don't even know who they're arresting. And if they do make an arrest and that criminal does face a New York judge, since it's their first offense, they'll probably get off light. And that means the chances of that same person going out and then reoffending definitely aren't zero. And it very well may be that experienced violent criminals are roaming the streets of New York and the authorities have no idea. And what's really frightening is to think that somebody who travels all the way here from somewhere else might in fact be forced into a life of crime, destroying their future here before it even gets off the ground. And what that's created is a system where right now people are advocating for full work authorization for everybody immediately. Now that would definitely be cheaper than putting people in luxury hotels in New York because they can't earn a living and provide for themselves. But critics say that a system like that would just be rewarding people who've come here in a manner that is not the official process for entering the country. What do you think America should do about this? Let me know. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.